One of the big criticisms from MAGA for quite some time, Trump brings it up constantly, his allies just as much, is that Harris doesn't do enough interviews, doesn't engage with reporters enough. And we've talked about how it makes sense right after she became the nominee. There's a lot to do. The policy proposals all need to be crafted, a vision, explanations of the record, and preparing for that big debate. That obviously went really well for Harris. And to me, after the CNN interview, it was my expectation that then we would see more frequent appearances. CNN interview, then a little bit later, the debate, and then she did have another interview with a local news station. And I'll play clips from it for you. This does shut down and shut up the talking point that we've been hearing if she continues to do this as frequently. And then in addition, it really, really became a topic of conversation for MAGA folks criticizing the content of this interview, which is expected. But I want to address something I know we're going to be seeing a lot of between now and November 5th, which is selective clipping. You see it across the political spectrum, but goodness, we're going to see it a lot with Harris interviews. And so what we're going to do is first I'm going to play for you a one minute and 30 second clip that MAGA was all talking about. Then I'll show you what happened right after it that sort of dismantles what they were saying. And then after that, we're going to go to a Trump clip that really brutalizes what they're saying. And I'll give you What's a fair criticism of this clip versus the very unfair one that most MAGA people are jumping on? So first, here's someone, a MAGA person, who said an interview asked an interviewer asked Kamala for one or two specific ideas she has for bringing down prices. She responded with, "I grew up in a neighborhood where people were very proud of their lawns. It's all just rehearsed talking points." And the Trump War Room posted this. You saw a bunch of people say, "She can't think. She can't answer a question. She's so vague." Watch it. Then I'll show you the full context. And then we'll discuss. When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. Um, I grew up a middle class kid. My mother raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. Um, she was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. Um, I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know, if, if, but a lot of people will relate to this. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn, you know. And, um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that we as Americans have a beautiful character. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations and dreams, but not everyone necessarily has access to the resources that can help them fuel those dreams and ambitions. So when I talk about building an opportunity economy, it is very much with the mind of investing in the ambitions and aspirations and the, and the incredible work ethic of the American people and creating opportunity for people, for example, to start a small business. And that's where the clip cuts off. And you might think, well, that sort of sums it up right now, because right after that is where the question's addressed, very specifically and very based on policy. I think you can, you can fairly say, I'll get to why I think she's probably doing this, but you could say, that took too long, you're setting them up to accuse you of being too vague or platitudes. But look at what she said right after that, and you realize, come on, whoever clipped this knows what they're doing. Example to start a small business. Um, my mother, you know, worked long hours, and our neighbor helped raise us. We used to call her, it was, I still call her, our second mother. She was a small business owner. I love our small business owners. I learned who they are from my childhood and she was a, a community leader she hired locally she mentored our small businesses are so much a part of the fabric of our communities not to mention really I think the backbone of America's economy so my opportunity economy plan includes giving startups a fifty thousand dollar tax deduction to start their small business it used to be five thousand dollars nobody can start a small business with five thousand dollars but investing in people's 
innovative ideas and giving them the ability to go for it. Um, opportunity economy, economy means, look, we don't have enough housing in America. We have a housing supply shortage. And what that means, in particular for so many younger Americans, the American dream is elusive. It's just actually not attainable. So part of my plan is to work with the private sector and housing developers to give them a tax credit, to be able to partner with us as the government, to build, and my goal is, three million new homes by the end of my first term. In addition, to help people who just want to get their foot in the door literally, and so giving first-time home buyers a $25,000 down payment assistance to be able to just get in the door and then they will do so three hyper specific goal based policies there they didn't include that in any of the clips that Meg is talking about right and you can always take issue with delivery related things I wish she had first said those then give the context of what's informing this based on her experience in her life fine levy those but but you're not fairly engaging with this interview if you go, she just said that she knows people who like to mow their lawns and that's that's her response to a question about opportunity economy. No, she lays out three specific policies. Now, before looking at more from this interview, I am going to subject you to the whole thing again. Okay, please stick around because I have more to say. But the people saying that Harris can't, deliver things properly or is being too vague or it's all sort of uh the one, one thing there was rehearsed talking points or she doesn't understand they'll say what she's talking about remember that's what she delivers in a few minutes starts with background and i'll address how i would have done that differently we can always do that but then gets to very specific policies the small business related one, the housing initiative, and then the first time home buyer policy. Engage with those. And if you disagree with the MAGA, then then thoughtfully talk about that. But not even including the part of the question where she addresses, or the part of the answer where she addresses the question is, is pretty dishonest. But remember, they say she is the one who can't answer a question directly when this is their guy. If you win in November, can you commit to prioritizing legislation to make childcare affordable? And if so, what specific piece of legislation will you advance? Well, I would do that. And we're sitting down, you know, I was uh, somebody, we had uh, Senator Marco Rubio and my daughter Ivanka was so uh, impactful on that issue. It's a very important issue. But I think when you talk about the kind of numbers that I'm talking about, that because look child care is child care it's, couldn't you know there's something you have to have it in this country you have to have it uh, but when you talk about those numbers compared to the kind of numbers that i'm talking about by taxing foreign nations at levels that they're not used to but they'll get used to it very quickly and it's not going to stop them from doing business with us but they'll have a very substantial tax when they send product into our country. Uh, those numbers are so much bigger than any numbers that we're talking about, including childcare, that it's going to take care. We're going to have, I, I look forward to having no deficits within a fairly short period of time, coupled with uh, the reductions that I told you about on waste and fraud and all of the other things that are going on in our country. Because I have to stay with child care. I want to stay with child care. But those numbers are small relative to the kind of economic numbers that I'm talking about, including growth, but growth also headed up by what the plan is that I just uh, that I just told you about. We're going to be taking in trillions of dollars, and as much as child care uh, is talked about as being expensive, it's relatively speaking not very expensive compared to the kind of numbers we'll be taking in. We're going to make this into an incredible country that can afford to take care of its people, and then we'll worry about the rest of the world. Let's help other people. But we're going to take care of our country first. This is about America first. It's about make America great again. We have to. <laughs> it never gets old. I'm sorry you had to listen to the whole thing again. Oh, that that's the guy who knows how to answer a question directly? She gave you three very specific policies relating to her opportunity economy. Later in the interview, she gives more. 
Trump gets asked about childcare and does something I've never seen done with the English language, which is essentially using English words without ever using the English language. <laughs> Just sort of. <laughs> I'm. I'm. When she asked the question, I had more clarity about his plan on childcare than I do now, which was zero. Now I have negative clarity. Oh my goodness. So that hypocrisy is clear. Before playing the next part, I do think because it's long been a criticism of Vice President Harris that quite, that answers aren't direct enough to the questions. At the debate, they sure were. But sometimes in interviews, that'll be the mag criticism. Obviously, you can't constantly be reacting to how MAGA is criticizing you because no matter what she does, no matter what, they're going to say she was terrible and the interview was horrible. But I do think it would be effective when these questions, because it's going to continue to be the way they're asked, is what is your plan for blank to go, all right, what I want to talk about is my three policies relating to what you what you just mentioned. We're going to talk about small business tax incentives. We're going to talk about... Uh, housing initiatives to create more housing because of our housing shortage. And we're going to talk about the third one, which <laughs> now I'm, now I'm needing to remember, uh, tax incentives for first time home buyers. But before I give you the specifics on that, let me tell you what this is informed by. I grew up in a working class family raised by my mother and in my community, right? And then you get into it because sometimes people won't wait to hear the policies if it gets too long talking about the background things, but what she's dealing with here and what's really difficult to walk the fine line on is the other criticism of her is that people don't know her well enough. So she's trying to, in every answer, and you'll notice this a lot, she brings up that she's a gun owner in her gun related question, brings up her mother and this. She's also trying to tell people who she is and the interviewer isn't going to ask very often, just tell me something, just tell me, tell me anything you want, go ahead. They're going to ask a specific question. So what she's doing is both answering the specific question, but taking some time before to inform you on a little bit of her because people's criticism is they don't feel like they know her well enough because she's newer on the scene and how prominent she currently is. And you understand why balancing those two things, the specifics and informing people on who you are could yield that answer. And the fact that she got to very coherently the clear policies she's proposing that I think a lot of Americans would be excited about contrasted against Trump's brain melting answers whenever he tries to go specific with policies. The most specific policy he can articulate is they're coming from jails, drill baby drill, right? And it's remarkable, remarkable that the people defending the child care answer are so upset because there were a couple terms like opportunity, ambition, dreams that you would describe as maybe platitudes connected to a discussion of what informed her to, what experiences currently inform the policy she's proposing. Uh, but here is another part of this interview. You talk at the debate and at previous appearances about turning the page mm -hmm. uh, on the past. And in fact, here today in Johnstown, you're talking about a new way forward. Yeah. I think some people have a question, given maybe your current role as Vice President of the United States, how different you are from Joe Biden. And so I wonder if there are one or two spots, policy areas or approaches where you would say, I'm a different person. Well, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I, I offer a new generation of leadership. And so, for example, thinking about developing and, and creating an opportunity economy where it's about investing in areas that really need a lot of work and maybe focusing on, again, the aspirations and the dreams, but also just recognizing that at this moment in time, some of the stuff we could take for granted years ago, we can't take for granted anymore. Um, for example, another... Um, plan that I have that is a new approach is to expand the child tax credit to six thousand dollars for young families for the first year of their child's life because that is obviously a very critical stage of development of a child and a lot of young parents need the help to buy a car seat or a crib or clothes for their kids and so my approach is about new ideas, new policies that are directed at the current moment 
And also, to be very honest with you, my focus is very much in what we need to do over the next 10, 20 years to catch up to the 21st century around, again, capacity, but also challenges. Crime and public... And then moves on to the other question. So it's interesting since we're watching the actual raw full interview parts of it without the cuts that I was seeing in the MAGA clips people were posting, the differences. Because the part where she mentions the expanded child tax credit is the part that gets cut out. And then you only have the ending about capacity and challenges. And again, the criticism, just so y'all know sort of what's out there, is, ah, that's too vague, that's too generic. But so often, even if you you think there's a better way to deliver the ending to an answer, or I mentioned the beginning of the other one, it's so ridiculous to not engage with the actual substance that was there, right? To not give your take on the actual part of the answer that directly addresses the question he asked. And that is, hey, here's one policy Biden wasn't proposing that I am relating to not just the enhanced child tax credit as we knew it before in the pandemic era that Biden was wanting to implement and Harris wants to implement, but also an even more expanded one, if I understand her correctly, in the first year of a child's life. Interesting. I'm sure a lot of families would like that, but they're not going to hear about that if they're going to MAGA Media Alice where they only cut the last part or they only cut the beginning part of the other answer. And again, what's being weaved into the, the point she's making has to be a little bit of, hey, here's you getting to know sort of what I'm thinking in a gen general sense. Start with that, get onto the policy, and uh, and leaving some little moments where out of context clips can portray something about this interview that I think is not accurate. But overall, doing more interviews, that shuts down that big talking point. They'll have new ones though. <laughs> obviously, and so much more clear on what policies she's proposing. I do want to mention as well that the answer there on Bidenomics, what's different between you and Biden? That question. I mentioned a different segment that it's a really difficult thing to maneuver when she has to be mindful of how people feel alienated when you say, oh, I've already done a bunch of stuff. If they don't feel that their chief concerns have been addressed. So when I on this show walk you through what is just, whether you like them or not, a historic, historic policy record under Biden-Harris, and a lot of problems have been solved and a really strong recovery did happen, we can engage with that in a much more concise, factual, just sort of here's just the facts type of way, because that's, that's our job. That's the, the conversation we're trying to have. For someone running for president, if she were to answer that question by saying, listen, there are some new things I'm proposing, but there's a lot of similarities because I've been a part of this successful administration. So heck yeah, I'm proud of all the stuff we did. That doesn't come off correctly, which is why it has to be, I'm proposing new things for this moment. Meaning now that we're past the recovery effort, past the super strong economic recovery, solving the public health crisis, bringing down crime, Based on where we stand now, I have new proposals, which makes me different than Biden in that sense. And that's what I'm going to focus on implementing based on the challenges we face unique to this moment, which is her way of saying, I'm not breaking from him on the especially legislative record that we have. I was a part of that or the executive actions that have been taken. But now that we're here and he's not going to be the president. I'd be the president in a different moment, solving different problems, you know, but you have to do it in a way that informs people about that without offending people when they feel like the Biden agenda hasn't solved the problems they want to. So let me know what you thought of that in the comments, support the show by clicking the join button below. And we will add to the end of this, a little election themed merch that we're dropping limited time only, and you can get 30% off with the promo code Kamala.